Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about painting directly in color using a tiny study. That's what I like to call this exercise. So you can see here I've got my reference on the left, and I've got my canvas on the right. So the goal here is I'm just going to try and reproduce the colors I see without ever color picking. So I'm just looking and reproducing, but only on this tiny little canvas. Now, there's a lot of reasons to work small. In the past, I've talked about working small for speed and for thumbnails. Well, the reason we're working small this time is because it stops you from getting bogged down with details. What I'm working on here is color. I want to observe what I'm seeing and paint it on the canvas. I'm not trying to make a beautiful reproduction of this photograph. All I'm trying to do is think about the colors that are represented in the scene. If you've been watching Control Paint for long, you know I like to dissect large, scary concepts into smaller, more manageable ideas. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. This study is not the end goal. The end goal is knowing how to paint color directly onto the canvas. So by dissecting this out into a tiny little canvas, I can just focus on the one thing I'm trying to learn. And from a technical standpoint, I'm doing all the things I normally do. I'm using temp layers, so you can see my layer stack is growing as I work. I'm using the eraser just as much as I'm using the brush. And I'm also containing all of these layers inside of a group with a layer mask. And that just allows me to not worry about going outside of the canvas borders. But really, none of that technical stuff matters. You could be doing this with acrylic paints and traditional canvas. The important part is that I'm trying to look at those colors and paint them into my image. And this is harder than it seems. And truthfully, it's difficult to explain exactly what I'm doing here. This is one of those practice a lot and you'll get better at it sort of ideas. I can say though that a lot of the color picking I'm doing is relative. So once I get a couple colors down on the canvas that are pretty close, then I'll start doing darker and lighter versions of those colors, or changing the hue a little bit. So you'll see me opening the color picker and moving it just a tiny bit. That's sort of a relative color move. So there I change the hue a lot, but only change the value and the saturation a tiny bit. So in this way, as I begin to get this palette down on the canvas, it gets easier to work, because I sort of have it close and then I'm just refining. Another great reason to do a study like this so small is because it's just quicker to do. Since I've been painting a while, this sort of thing is pretty quick for me. I think this whole study takes me about five minutes to do. Yours will probably take longer, and that's not a problem. But it's important to remember that if you were to do this same study really big, even full size of the photo, it would take you far longer. So relative to the other paintings you make, a tiny little postage stamp study like this is going to be quicker. And that's nice. You know, maybe you'll do it as a warm-up before you get to your painting for the day. Or if you had an hour, you could do a few of these. But I really like doing studies like this because this is one of those times where I don't have to worry what the final result looks like. I'm not trying to make it look like the photo. I'm just trying to make the colors like the photo. And it's really interesting. Once you start doing these, you learn something. And then when you do a study with more details, or maybe an entire illustration, the concepts you learned while doing these tiny little color studies will just work out in your painting. Your brain has a great way of remembering how color works in certain situations, and then you just sort of pack that away. And then when you are doing a real painting, it just comes out automatically. It's really cool. But that really only works if you do a lot of these. You can't expect to Sit down for 20 minutes, do one of these, and then be a color master. Really, that's not how it works. And especially since the goal of this is not to have a beautiful image, it's a really good idea to hold yourself accountable at the end of it. I like to do a little debrief at the end where I look at the reference I was going for, and then look at my version, and just see where it's off. Especially if they're sitting right next to each other, it's really easy to tell where you messed up. And that's fine. That is the area that you'll work on next time. 
So for me, I see that the water is not quite dark enough in mine. It's not a deep blue color like it is in the photo. And so it sort of blends in with the sky more. So next time I'll try and separate those a bit more. But the point is, I've learned something and it only took five minutes. So if you want to improve your color, get out there and do some tiny studies. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.